Hey everybody, welcome back to Swift Lessons for another lead guitar tutorial. In today's session, I'm getting started with the series breaking down melodic guitar solos over common chord progressions that you're guaranteed to come across. Getting started with the 1-6-4-5 progression in the key of G. So I've got this Fender Stratocaster, I'm plugged direct into the Spark amplifier from Positive Grid, and I'm making use of their Fat Blues Tone preset. You can follow along with everything I play today at patreon.com slash lessons. I got tabs up there. Now let's get started breaking down some common licks that you can play over top of a G, E minor, C, D progression. Okay, a close look at the fretboard, getting started with some prerequisites. Before you jump into learning the solo, you should first get down the source scale that the solo is being built from. So very simple, it's the major pentatonic scale in the key of G, beginning here on the 15th fret of the low E string. Looks and sounds like this. Okay, so very, very simple. Just 15 on the low E, 12 on the A, up to 14, 12 on the D, up to 14, 12 on the G, up to 14, 12 on the B, up to 15, and then 12 on the high E string, and up to 15. Okay, you put that together and we have... Okay, that's the perfect place to get started soloing in the key of G for beginners. Now we also have the upper extension. Okay, that's going to be 16 on the G string. We're going to the 15th fret of the B string and then up to 17. And then the same thing on the high E string. 15 to 17. Okay, you can link those two scale positions up. Right there on the G string, so. Very commonly sliding up into the upper extension position. Okay, so that's the G major pentatonic scale, a very useful solo in position. Now, the next thing you should know, more often than not, advanced lead guitar players are not just picturing the scale positions, they're also picturing chord shapes. This allows them to always know what notes are going to sound good over a given chord change. Okay, so if you're playing over top of a 1, 6, 4, 5 progression in the key of G, okay, so G, E minor, C, D, you should also be able to visualize and play those chord shapes in the position that you're jamming in. So that G chord can be played up an octave. Okay, this is certainly an uncommon chord shape, somewhat uncomfortable, but still very useful for visualization because it's going to reveal a bunch of notes I can play over top of the G chord. And it also overlaps with that major pentatonic scale. Okay, the same principle for the E minor chord. I can play this with the 14th fret of the D string and barring across the 12th frets of the G string, B string, and the high E string. Okay, again, all of these notes can be played over top of the E minor chord, and I can play this as a full bar as well. Now, for the 4 and the 5 chords, C major and D major, I can play those in two ways. I can use my D shape major chord triad. Okay, for C major, I've got 12, 13, 12 on the G string, B string, and high E string. And I can just take that up a whole step to create the chord D major. Okay, that's very, very useful. Again, I can use those as arpeggios to play over top of those two chords. Okay, I can also play the C chord just by utilizing my C major chord shape. Okay, just changing my finger and up, and then sliding it up an octave. Okay, and then barring the 12th fret like I did with the G chord. Okay, so that's 15, 14, 12, 13, 12. A C major chord up an octave, converted to bar chord position. I can bring that up one whole step. And I've got a D major chord. Okay, now, again, 
Those chord positions can be used to create very useful arpeggios, and I'm always picturing them so that way I don't get lost as the chords change in the progression. Okay, so there you have your prerequisites. We have the G major pentatonic scale. There it is in the main position. And then also the upper extension. We can also play our one, six, four, five in G up here in the octave. Okay. The G major chord, the E minor, the C major, and the D major. Now let's get started learning some licks. Okay, very good everybody. Now jumping into learning today's guitar solo, getting started with line number one of our tab. We're playing over top of the G major to E minor chord change in six eight time, a very fun rhythm. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Over those changes we're playing, including that pickup line, getting us into the G chord, one, two, three, four, G and minor. All right, we're gonna stop right there at those Hendrix style double stops. Again, real slow. Okay, so we're starting off with this very cool kind of R&B style lick. All right, hammering from 12 up to 14. 12 on the G, back to 14, and then 12, just as the G major chord comes in. Okay, and that's a G note, so it matches. All right, nice and resolute. From there, we're gonna do a back bend. 14th fret of the G string, bend it up without picking. All right, and then we're just gonna let it kind of fall. Let your guitar weep. Sometimes I like to throw in a little slap there. All right, then we're down to 12. Before sliding up. 14 up to 16 on the G. And then to the 15th fret of the B string with a little bit of vibrato if you've got the time. So. All right, now it's time for some double stops. Right now, we're right over top of the position of the G major chord in this kind of F shape. Okay, that's another really good position of the G chord to visualize. All right, we're gonna play. All right, so I'm barring across the 15th frets of the B string and high E and hammering up to 17 on the B string. All right, so I hammer and then go back to 15. All right, with those double stops. All right, now the same kind of rhythm. All right, now I'm fretting the 14th fret G and 15th fret B, hammering on the G string up to 16. And then going back to those two notes there. All right, you put those together and we have. You can also use hybrid picking. All right, all of line number one now over G and E minor. G. E minor. Okay, that's gonna get us to line number two of our tab, where we're transitioning to the C major chord. And then sliding into some notes for the D major, okay? In both instances, using notes directly taken from those chord shapes. Okay, so all of line number two is gonna sound like this. Okay, making use of some micro bending as well. Okay, so playing over top of that C major chord. Once again, real slow, we're gonna play. Okay, definitely channeling a little bit more of that Jimi Hendrix vibe. So one more time. Okay, so I'm fretting the 12th fret of the G string and 13th fret of the B string. Striking those two notes together as I hammer up in vibrato on the 14th fret of the G string. Then I'm back to 12. All right, next a hammer and a pull. 12 up to 14, back to 12. Then I'm gonna go to the 14th fret of the D string. Very common movement. Okay, so so far we have. Ah, uh, I'm gonna 
end the measure there on the 12th fret of the G string. So. Okay, next. As the D major chord comes in, we need to find some notes directly out of that chord shape. Okay, I can picture that D chord in its C-shaped position. Okay, arpeggiating the chord, I'm sliding up to the 16th fret of the D string, grabbing the 14th fret of the G, and then I'm gonna grab the 15th fret of the B string, and vibrato if I've got some time. All right, so so far you have. All right, next, climbing up the major pentatonic scale upper extension. Okay, and using some micro bend in there, I'm starting off. Hammering 15 up to 17 on the B string. Then the 15th fret high E string. 17 on the B. Completes that measure. Now the fun part, micro bending. All right, I'm gonna grab the 17th fret of the high E string. Bend it up a full step. Then I'm just gonna go a little higher. All right, my goal is to play. Okay, so I'm trying to mimic the sound of the 19th and 20th frets. All right, then I'm gonna bend and release before going to the 15th fret of the high E string. Okay, so you put that together, we have. All right, and all of line number two. D major. Okay, that's gonna get us to line number three, but first let's put together lines one and two. Should sound like this. G. E minor. C. D major. G major. All right, now line number three, E minor chord is coming back in. That's for C, D major. All right, and then kind of a D7 is being implied there. Okay, so again, all of line number three real slow. Okay, so breaking down line number three, we start it on the 14th fret of the high E string. All right, this is over the chord E minor, and that note is gonna sound very cool, very kind of mysterious over that E minor chord shape. So we're playing. All right, so that was 14, 15 on the B, and then 12 on the B string, another note inside the E minor chord. All right, now we're gonna let that ring out, and as the C major chord comes in, we're gonna picture that chord in its D-shaped position, sliding up in. A classic kind of bluesy, R&B, kind of arpeggio lick. All right, so 12 with the slide in, 13, 12, 15 on the D, and then we're gonna play 13 to 14. All right, that was on the D string before grabbing the 13th fret, B string, and vibrato in. So. All right, one more time. Slide. All right, now we have two notes here in a double stop. Just take them up one half step and pinch them together, and then do it once more. Now I'm on frets 16 and 15. Okay, now this is right out of the D major chord shape that we had in its C shaped position. Okay, so so far you have in line three. Okay, we can further imply the D major or D7 chord shape by grabbing 17 and 17, 18 and 18, 19 and 19. Okay, that sums up all of line number three. So.
okay, you can see how I'm just kind of transitioning from one chord shape to the next. At least that's what I'm visualizing. Okay, now putting the entire solo together, it should sound like this. A one, two, three, four. G and E minor. C. D. G. E minor. C. D. All right, just like that, everybody, congratulations. You've learned a complete solo in the key of G over a one, six, four, five, and hopefully you understand a little bit of the mindset of an advanced soloist using scales, but also visualizing chord shapes. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this lead guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking in. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia, saying happy picking.